हरे कृष्णा वॉट इज द भगवदगीता परस्पेक्टिव ऑन ऑर्गन डोनेशन आंसर द भगवदगीता इज अ बुक दैट गिव्स अ टाइमलेस विजडम सो इफ यू कंसिडर द टाइम स्केल देन एट डिफरेंट टाइम्स इन ह्यूमन हिस्ट्री देर कुड बी डिफरेंट इश्यूज विच वुड बी कंटेम्प्ररी इश्यूज एंड द गीता विजडम is timeless in the sense that from within its wisdom insights can be drawn that can be applied to various times various contemporary issues so to check how a particular issue could be illuminated by gita wisdom we need to consider the underlying issues involved and where that issue interacts with the wisdom of the gita so with this that background in mind now if you consider organ donation what exactly happens in organ donation is that when a person is near death or a person has just died then organs from that person's body can be taken and transplanted into another person it may be eyes it may be some limbs it may be kidneys and depending on the technological sophistication different organs may be harvested like this and utilized so are there some ethical issues involved over here we can look at how the gita's wisdom illuminates these ethical issues so broadly speaking first of all any technology can be used as a tool by the powerful to exploit the powerless so it could be that sometimes organs may be harvested from living people and sometimes it may be done against their will and that is definitely not just unethical it is criminal and brutal so every individual has autonomy and the gita says that every individual is a soul who has been given a particular body by the divine so if we consider we are all spiritual beings and we all have our physical bodies so no individual has the right to encroach on other person's body and take organs from there because every body has been given by the divine to that particular person now what if a person is going to die and should that person give their organs to other people now in general uh, the rightness or wrongness of action can be considered considering three broad factors one is the action itself or we can call it the content of the action then we can look at before we get into the action we look at the intent of the action why is the person doing it what exactly are they doing that the content and then we can look at the consequence of the action what will be the likely result of that particular action and based on this a decision can be made and the gita itself is a part of the mahabharata and this threefold basis for analysis is used in the uh, mahabharata also repeatedly and each of these analysis or each of these points for analysis can be illumined by gita wisdom so the content of the action to some extent has now become possible with technology if we look back at the past we will see that organ transplant has been a part of the broad vedic lore whether it be ganesh getting a elephant's head after his own head has been cut off whether it is daksha getting a human head after his head had been replaced by a goat's head now today we may dismiss these stories as uh, imaginary pre scientific fantasies but the point is that the idea of organs being transplanted is something which is not uncommon there is also the story of the sage dadichi who gave his entire body for a, a noble cause and there is the story of the sage yayat of the king yayati who traded his son's youth who got his son's youth so that he could enjoy youthful pleasures of course he was not contented and then eventually he re, he returned the youth of his son to his son 
But the point is, this particular phenomena has precedence in the Vedic tradition. So, if we consider the broad parameters involved, so some people might say that you know, the divine has ordained certain things in certain ways and let things just go along nature. And in that way, the case, let's not interfere with the working of nature and let the body be cremated or buried or whatever it is that is done according to one's tradition. However, when we say let nature follow its course, to what extent are we going to do that? When we get a cough, we take medicine. Why don't we let nature follow its course at that time? In one sense, the entire field of Ayurveda, which is a, which is a traditional Indian Vedic science, involves using natural mechanisms to interfere with natural dysfunctions. So we don't, what is following, letting nature follow its course? Is it letting the body deteriorate because of some malfunctioning or is it taking some substances to let the body come back to its natural order? So some people who just th think of sticking to the letting nature take its course may decide that, yeah, I'll just not get involved in organ donation. And there are others who can say that uh, our body is actually a gift given by God. And one aspect of spiritual realization is that we understand that we as souls, we leave the body at the death and the body falls. So when death occurs, the soul goes to a new destination. So why should the soul be too attached and wanting to control what happens to the body after the soul has departed from the body? While the soul is here, then the soul has to use the body as a vehicle. But after we have given up the vehicle, we are going to another destination, we get another vehicle, go to another level of reality. Then why be so fixated on what happens with the previous vehicle that we already discarded? If it can be used to do some good for others, why not? So this we could say, the con the the path that let's let nature take its course could be the choice based on caution and the choice based on compassion could be that let us give our body and let it be of some use to someone else now of course even compassion may be balanced by caution some people may be concerned that if i give my bodily limbs, my eyes or my hands to someone else and what if that person misuses those to cause harm to others, to engage in selfish or exploitative or predatory behavior, then am I responsible for that? Actually, uh, this is uh, a valid consideration but we don't have to become paranoid about this because in one sense anything can be misused. Parents give birth to children and then children may grow up to become grow, become responsible citizens or may become law-breaking citizens. So are parents responsible? Well, partially yes. But does that mean parents should never have children? No. So depend. So we may look at the consequence and we may think, oh, there's a possibility of danger over there. Let me not do it. Or we may look at the intent. My purpose over here is to help someone. If somebody is struggling through life, maybe because they lack eyes and they get eyes that will do them good. So that will make them life easier. They may be able to behold the beauty of God's creation and by that they, their hearts may become more attracted to God in gratitude. So if the intent is to help others and not just help them engage in sensual selfish pleasures but help them uh, raise their consciousness by using the senses which they didn't have earlier, then that intent may help a person to be more compassionate and see organ donation as a compassionate activity. So overall, rather than saying that there is one answer from the Bhagavad Gita for such issues, the Gita actually towards the end encourages Arjuna to deliberate and do as he desires. Vimrushyaita dasheshena yathechita kuru. So similarly, Taking that spirit, what we have done is provided some food for thought, some perspectives based on the Bhagavad Gita and each individual can take responsibility for 
the values which they wish to live by, uh, live by, and the values they wish to leave behind when they depart from the world. Thank you. Hare Krishna.